Hello Year 6, uh, you don't know me, I don't know you, so we're in the same situation. Uh, my name is Mr Milner, I'm the Head of Year 7 and Transition Manager at Hinchinbrook School. Uh, now obviously we find ourselves in slightly odd times um, and therefore the chance of me getting around to visit all of you is going to be quite small. All right. Um, I hope to still try and do that but equally it, it, we're just going to err on the side of caution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the talk that I would have given had I been visiting you um, and hopefully it will give you a, a sort of a brief idea of what to expect when you arrive with us in September. Uh, equally we're also still hoping to do a taste today of some kind but you'll understand I hope that um, when, when that happens and, and how it looks uh, at the moment we're very unsure uh, because obviously we need to pay attention to what the government are telling us. Uh, but I wanted to welcome you, uh, virtually, uh, to Hinchinbrook School. Uh, as I say, this is very odd, this is odd for me. Uh, I'm standing in my teaching classroom, uh, rather than in a, a primary school classroom where I would see you all and be able to interact, but we're going to do our best, all right? So, here we are, virtual transition visit. Now, here are some of the worries that we assume uh, over through experience, and I've done this job for quite a few years now, uh, that a number of you might have. Now you might not have any, and, th and that's fantastic, but what I'm here to tell you is it's absolutely fine to have anyone, any combination, all of these things, although that would be a bit of a shame, uh, it's absolutely normal, all right? Uh, and really, what my job, and Mr Pittock, who is our student support officer, who is a non-teaching member of staff, who is in an office and, and around the school to help you throughout the day when I'm teaching and when your tutors are teaching. Uh, we are here to help you. We are here to help you overcome some of these things. All right. Now, many of you will not experience any of these. Some of you will experience some of them and very, very few of you will experience quite a few of them. All right. But if you speak to some of our year sevens at the moment, they will tell you that they experience these things and within a week or two, they, they, had, you know, they had put it behind them, they had uh, sought help, which is a, a key aspect, trying to come to us for some help, uh, and they had got through some of these problems. All right? And the most important thing I would say is you communicate these problems to your tutor as a first port of call, and we'll come on to what a tutor is in due course, because I know that's new to you, all right? uh, or to myself, or to Mrs Pittock, uh, or really any member of staff, because everybody is going to understand Everybody knows that you're year seven, everybody will know that you're new, and everybody will know that you are nervous and anxious and, and that you don't know how things work. And that's why it's a safe place to make mistakes. It's a safe place, it's a safe environment to, to, to mess up, basically. And, and we expect that, we actually welcome that, because messing up is an opportunity to learn, uh, making mistakes is a chance to overcome those, uh, so that you won't then experience those again. You'll feel much more comfortable in your environment. We want you to be part of our community, our hbk.com. And that is important to us. We want you not only to uh, attend our school and come to school and do your work and go home, we want you to feel part of something. And speaking from myself, uh, just a little bit, I, I, I was a student here, so uh, some of your parents might have been at school with me, which is kind of weird. Uh, that always happens. Um, I was a student here quite a long time ago now, and I guess I, I did leave. Like I, I, I don't stay, I don't, I don't stay here for the last twenty odd years. Um, but but it, it really stuck with me, uh, my experience here, and, and it's a very special place. So um, you are you are lucky to come to our school, and we are lucky to have you because it's the students that make our school special. So. We're going to get through these, whatever they happen to be. Now, who's who? It's quite important, I suppose, that you know certain members of staff. The key member of staff for you is your tutor, but at the moment, we're still working on the team. And at the moment, a lot of these things are just going to be names. They're just going to be names of people. So not really going to mean a huge amount to you. All right. But at least you can see me. And so you know what I look like. Uh, and so that is someone that you know and that you recognise and hopefully a friendly face. Um, but we're going to go through some of the key members of staff at school. So we've got down the bottom here the names of our tutor groups. And so you will be in one of these 10 groups of students. 
they basically work very much like your, uh, your classes at the moment. So there'll be about 30 students in your form uh, and you will see your tutor and your tutor will be your main point of contact. I guess the difference is, as I'm sure you understand, is that because we specialise in different subjects, doing science really inside your uh, tutor room is probably not going to work. And so it's really important that you go to a science room. And so during the day, you will be away from your tutor. You will have various teachers, five probably, uh, different teachers because you have five lessons in a day. And then you will return to your tutor in the afternoon and you'll see them again. And if there's been any problems or any difficulties or you're celebrating some successes, which is what we want, then you'll be at a chance to have a touch base with your tutor in the afternoon as well. So you'll have that opportunity in the morning to see your tutor and in the afternoon. So your tutor is the most important person. As you can see, we've got five houses. We've got those represented by the five symbols and the five colours there. I'm sure many of you who have siblings or have just taken an interest, gone to our website, uh, will obviously have an awareness of these houses. But we've got Cromwell, we've got Montague, we've got Pepys, we've got Vesey, and we've got Wilton. And these five houses, or the, the people that these five houses uh, are named after were in some way very important to our school or at least to our area uh, and I won't give up too much of that information because I know our wonderful house leaders will want to be talking to you about exactly who their house uh, representative was all about and, and, and what they uh, their history with our school so I won't steal their thunder on that. Now you've already met me, hello, uh, Mrs Pittock is standing behind the camera um, she, she, is, she isn't going to make an appearance, um, but she, she is wonderful. She basically does kind of the work during the day when I'm teaching. She kind of helps with all sorts of different problems and questions. Uh, and yeah, basically she is your go-to person during the day if there's any problems. Um, and she is based in the lower school office. And we have Mrs. Derbyshire. Mrs. Derbyshire has worked with year seven um, for I think at least 10 years now. Um, and so she is very experienced in the sense that she produces the letters, she does a lot of the administration. So all of the letters and all of those sorts of things that come out from school, come out from me, go via Mrs Derbyshire. So she is going to be the person your parents have been in touch with a lot in terms of all the forms and the, and, and the, you know, the bits and bobs that your parents have to fill out in order for you to uh, attend at Hinchinbrook in September. So that's Mrs Derbyshire. So that's the lower school uh, office team. Um, and we kind of oversee, or I oversee, the 10 tutors that we have in our year group. Then we've got Mr Pape. Mr Pape uh, is a senior member of staff um, and he is an, called an assistant principal, that's his title. Uh, his basic job is to oversee the, all the year groups um, and make sure that I'm doing my job properly, I guess, and make sure I'm okay. Uh, and then if I'm okay, then obviously that makes his job easier and, and that's how it works. So he oversees the heads of year. He's making sure that your welfare is looked after. He's equally also interested in your progress academically. So that's Mr. Pape's role at school. Oh, there we go. Okay, they've come up at once. I don't know why I don't change that. I should have changed that. Never mind. So we've got three vice principals. They all have slightly different jobs. Um, and we've got Miss Nightingale. We've got Mr. Cook. And we've got Mrs Tandy. Uh, and those three members of staff are very senior. They support uh, kind of the structure of the school. Uh, they help in terms of doing things like planning the curriculum, making sure that we're teaching you the correct things, as well as sorting out examinations, as well as preparing to make sure that we're following all the government guidelines, uh, in addition to helping welfare and helping make sure that you are uh, healthy, both mentally and physically, and that's very, very important to us at Hinchinbrook. And then finally, we've got Mr. Patterson. Mr. Patterson is our principal, so he oversees uh, the entire school, so he's like your head teacher uh, at primary school, and obviously he has a senior team, um, and, and his job and, he, and what he wants, really, is for you to have the most success that you possibly can have, both uh, personally and from a teaching and a, and a learning perspective. So that's his role as such. Uh, it sounds very easy to say, but in terms of putting it into practice, obviously there's a lot of bits and pieces that go into making sure that a school runs successfully. Uh, we feel that we're, we're doing well, uh, and hopefully when you join us, we'll be doing even better. 
Now, what subjects will I study? So I'm just going to give you a, 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 an idea of those. Now at the moment, and I used to teach primary as well, so I understand the primary teacher is, is juggling all sorts of things. And, and you know, I, I have a lot of admiration for primary school teachers because A, I've been one, I know how difficult it is, and, and B, they have to do everything. So they're teaching you all sorts of subjects, some of which they will really love and they'll be amazing at, some of which they probably find quite tricky uh, and they probably have to do a lot of reading up, and I know from my experience, I have to do a lot of reading up about some subjects that perhaps I hadn't learnt about since I was certainly uh, maybe 10 or 11 years old. So, uh, you know, absolutely lots of respect for primary school teachers. At secondary, it's slightly different in that you are a teacher, and typically teachers will teach one subject, and that will be their passion, that will be the thing that drives them, that will be the thing that they get up for in the morning. Um, and so our science teachers, they'll pretty much teach science and that, and that will be that. And obviously science is a massive subject um, and so some of them will teach physics, some of them teach chemistry, some of them teach biology and some of them will teach all of those. Um, so that is quite a challenge. Uh, other teachers like myself who teach geography, uh, I also teach personal uh, social development, so your PSHE lessons. Uh, are mostly taught by me and so some teachers teach a variety of subjects but most will stick to their the one subject which in some ways means that that teaching is going to be first class that teaching is going to be exceptional because that is the people that is why those people are here because they teach those subjects and these are some of those subjects so as you can see uh, we've got the core subjects if you like although RPE should also be probably blue in that respect uh, as well as PE but the main subjects that we normally get asked about are English, Maths and Science. And I'm sure those are the subjects that are probably prioritised and the subjects that you mainly focus on uh, at primary school. I know that we always used to teach those in the morning. Certainly English and Maths used to be an hour of one and then an hour of another. Uh, and I guess that's another sort of change in secondary school. You will have more lessons uh, of English, Maths and Science than any other subjects, um, but you won't necessarily have them every day. Um, and so that's kind of when we talk about timetables, which I'd like to be able to do virtually today, but I, I really don't think trying to get to grips with the timetable but via uh, a video link is, is going to work. So that is something that I do very much want to, to get in, uh, uh, into your primary schools or, or for you to come up so that I can actually talk you through how to use a timetable. Because I know that is one of the things that some children find really challenging. It's very different. Um, but these are the subjects. Now, a couple of things just to point out. Obviously RPE, uh, RPE is something that you probably do study, um, it, it's religion, um, but it's also philosophy, so that's kind of what, how we think and what we think, why we think, things like that, and ethics, so the, the, the way that we do things, if you like. And so that's what RPE is, so for those of you that are wondering. Uh, other questions? Um, yeah, from the back of the room? Oh, there's, there's actually no one there. Um, PSHCE, so Personal Social uh, Health uh, Citizenship Education. So we've got, that's what I teach a lot of the time. I teach most year sevens. You have one of those lessons a fortnight. Uh, we've got IT. That's right. Uh, it's uh, Information Technology. Congratulations. Uh, and we've got DT. That's right. Yes, Design and Technology. Well done. Uh, and so that really covers it. Now, another question I quite often get when I visit primary schools is, am I going to do Spanish or am I going to do French? They don't always put that voice on, but uh, that's just me. Uh, am I going to do Spanish or am I going to do French? I don't know, okay? Uh, it is random. We try, we try to give you the same language that you study at primary school, but there are uh, stipulations involved in that. Uh, in the sense that we only have a certain number of Spanish teachers, a certain number of French teachers, we have a timetable uh, to fit, uh, and there's lots of things like that. So we don't ask people to sort of uh, request a language, because that would make our jobs basically impossible. We, we cannot promise to give everyone their promised language, so we don't ask for that as a preference. Okay? Right, timetable. Now this is actually very, very exciting news. Yes, it is. Uh, because we are potentially, very likely, to be changing our school day. I know, it's exciting. Um, there are lots of reasons for that, and I won't go into that in this video. Uh, this is news that we haven't had confirmed yet. Um, it is still going via our governors and our parents and things like that, but it's very likely that this will be our new timetable come September when you arrive with us. 
So let's run through it quickly. So we expect uh, you to arrive, some of you, uh, some of you from 8 o'clock onwards, but our supervision, which means when our staff are out on duty, starts at 8.20 every day. All right, so that is when staff will be around. Doesn't mean you can't arrive before that. We wouldn't really want you to arrive too long before that. We do serve breakfast in our food court, and so it's possible to get a breakfast before school. And those people, that starts from about uh, eight o'clock. So if you want to come in and get something to eat, then that, that is possible. Uh, but we don't want you arriving crazy early because, yeah, you'll just be bored and, uh, and things like that. And there's no one to supervise you before 8.20, so you bear that in mind. Uh, then we've got form time. This is, this is slightly new. We're starting a, a little bit earlier. So form time is going to begin at, uh, at 20 to 9. And we're going to have our longer form time in the morning now. All right. And so you'll have 20 minutes. And in your form time, you'll go to the same room every day, except assembly day. Uh, and you will do a variety of activities. Now, those activities might be related to uh, things around the world. So if we were looking at Black History Month, for example, we would do an activity to do with that. If we were looking at Remembrance, we would do an activity to do with that. Equally, we would do something about in the news, current affairs, the important things around the world. Uh, we would also be looking at things like improving your emotional literacy, which is this idea of being able to express your feelings and making sure that you are mentally healthy. And if you're not, that you can express that in a way that people are going to be able to understand. These are some of the things that we cover with your form tutor. So it's your form tutor who will see you every morning, all right, mostly in the same room, apart from assembly day, where it will be in the PAC, which I'll come to. Uh, and basically, you will have that opportunity to touch base. If there's been something going on at home, if there's something you want to talk to your tutor about, every single morning you'll have an opportunity to do that. Okay, then we've got an, an hour's lesson. So we've got period one, which is nine till ten. So it's quite easy to remember, which is on the hour, so that's nice. Uh, and then we've got another hour's lesson. So again, two hours of teaching. So you'll move between uh, one room and another room, lightly, uh, to, to move between two rooms there. Um, and we just expect you to get there to the other room as soon as possible. Uh, we know as yet we haven't developed teleportation. Uh, and therefore, there is an expectation that you are going to have to physically move from one place to another. Not, not like that, though, because that would be like a rabbit. Anyway. Uh, but you will move from one period to another and one place to another. And we appreciate that's going to take time. Uh, all right. You're not going to get told off if you, as long as you are aiming for that lesson. OK, uh, if you're sitting around talking to your friends, playing a computer game, yeah, you're probably going to get told off if you're then late for your next lesson. But we expect some transport time, all right? But we just expect you to get there as soon as possible, all right? Then you've got break time. Now, my suggestion is looking at that time frame, and I'm sure some of you have just focused on the purple because your stomach perhaps rules your life. Um, and so we need to make sure that you are uh, fed. We need to make sure that you are watered. We need to make sure you go to the toilet. These are things you can do at break time. We do not expect you to wait until 20 past one for that to be the first thing you eat since breakfast or certainly the first thing you drink. You can take water into lessons, uh, if it's in a flask or if it's in a, a container, but equally, if you want to buy a drink, you're, at, you're quite welcome to buy a drink in the food court at 11 o'clock, okay? So please, I recommend you use the toilet at this point. You also buy some food or, or have a drink or eat some food if you brought it with you, and you don't wait all the way until lunchtime to do that, because otherwise, you're really going to be flagging in period three and four. After break, You'll then have another lesson and another lesson. And as you can see, you'll then got two hours of teaching until you get to lunchtime. You have a 45 minute lunch break. Again, do the same sort of things at break. But there you have more of an opportunity to perhaps go and play football on the Astro if it's open or see your friends. There's a bit more free time there uh, to do things that young people like to do at free time. Uh, there are certain rules about that. There are certain boundaries and inbounds and out of bounds and activities that you can and can't do. We'll cover those more, hopefully, when we see you on the taste days, uh, assuming those still happen. If not, we'll cover it in September as a first uh, kind of first message, if you like. Uh, then we've got our afternoon registration. And this is now just 10 minutes. But in that 10 minutes, you come to your form room, same room that you started the day at. You see the same teacher, the tutor that you started your day with. And anything that's gone on in those four periods and at break or lunch, you can mention to your tutor. All right. Now, hopefully we like to share positives. Uh, we don't just want to hear about problems, but we are there to kind of field those problems as well. 
And so that is an opportunity. So you don't have to go home, be worrying about things that you otherwise would, because you have a chance to get those out in the open and to share those with an adult. All right. And so that is why that for me, that afternoon registration is so important because you've had four hours of lessons plus an hour of free time. We want to make sure that you are OK before you head off to period five and then potentially go home. So, yes, we've got our period five lesson just for an hour and we're finishing at quarter past three now. So that's 15 minutes earlier than we currently finish. So that's exciting. Uh, what it does mean is that it gives us more time to do clubs, even longer perhaps for clubs and things after school. And so, although it says end of school at quarter past three, um, I reckon get changed in about 15 minutes uh, and then you'll get to your club so much earlier than we currently do. Clubs normally now, they start as soon as you get changed, but normally about four o'clock. We could potentially start these clubs at half past three, which for me, I know as a real sporty person, that gives you that extra bit of time to do the, the thing that you really love. And you'll be looking forward to that, some of you, all day. All right, things like rugby, for example, for the boys at the start of the year. Um, netball, for the girls particularly, is a big, is a big sport at Hinchinbrook. Hockey, all right, cricket, athletics. You know, there are so many sports, I couldn't sit here and name them. Um, but there, you, know, you need to get involved. What you get out of Hinchinbrook is what you put in. All right, so if you, if you choose not to go to any clubs, then you won't get as much out of Finchinbrook. Clubs are a great way to meet new people because ultimately you've got things in common with those people because you obviously like that uh, activity or that sport because otherwise why would you go? My advice is that you take the opportunities and you try new things as well though. So don't just stick to the sports and the activities that you've already done, try new things. And I know in, in the current circumstances, I've been encouraging my year sevens at home whilst they've got some time to again try new skills at home right now because it's those things that will tell the difference between you and somebody else because at the end of your school time you will probably all come out with I hope coming to Hinchinbrook particularly some great qualifications but what you need to do is tell yourself apart from other people so that when you go to that job interview you have something else you have an extra skill you have something that makes you different, makes you special, makes you better, perhaps, than other people. Uh, because it's, it's a competition at the end of the day. And we want you to put yourselves in the most productive and most, uh, give you the most potential to succeed in the future. So that part of that is trying extracurricular clubs. Now, for those of you that aren't sporty, it's okay. We have lots of clubs that are related to music related to drama, related to uh, DT, there's a, there's a gaming club, um, there's, there's so many clubs that are not necessarily sport related. So if sport isn't your thing, which I get, um, there is something for you, all right? And if there isn't, then you can ask somebody to do it. So you can ask a member of staff, oh, I'd really fancy doing X, Y, or Z, all right? We have at one time done horse riding through Hinchinbrook, for example because a member of Hinchinbrook staff was passionate about horse riding. And so she put it to, took the club on and she took kids out horse riding. Well, you don't know until you ask. So if there's something you're interested in that we don't currently offer, then that's your opportunity to, to try and get us started with that. Because the more clubs, the better. Oh, there we go, competition time. Can't really do a competition, uh, but I'm just gonna pretend that you're gonna take part at home. So what time does school finish? See, I have to think about this because it's, it's changed. It's not what time it finishes at the moment. That's right, it's 3.15. Well done. Right, that's a bit more challenging because there's, there's a couple of bits to that question. So five houses, and what colours are they all? Because I didn't really talk too much about the colours. If we start with the first alphabetically, we'll go with Cromwell, and Cromwell is green, all right? Then we're going to move on to Montague. Montague is yellow, okay? Then we're going to go on to Peeps. Peeps is blue. Then we're going to go on to Veezy, and Veezy is red. And finally, we finish with Wilton, and Wilton is purple. So, congratulations if you've got all of those. That's ten pieces of information. Well done. Now, I'm not looking for first names. All right, because I didn't share first names because we don't really call. But that's another thing at secondary school, by the way. Most male teachers we call sir. 
it's kind of weird because you'll say sir and then five male members of staff that are around you. It's really quite a fun game. Because um, they'll all go, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, and, and female members of staff we call miss. Okay? So it's not essential that you necessarily know everybody's name. I mean, obviously, I would be mortally offended and wounded uh, if you didn't learn my name. I'd probably go home and cry. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to know everybody's name as a teacher. However, anyone? That's right, it's Mr. Cook. Congratulations, those of you that got Mr. Cook. Now, that's quite an easy lesson. I mean, I probably should have, quite an easy question. Right? I probably should have had that near, near the top because that is really, really easy, isn't it? That's right, it's just an hour. So it's an hour, it's easy to remember, okay? Oh, that's, that's important, that's important. Now, now, that has changed, but it's only changed by five minutes from what it is now. So let's just have a think about it. For me, for you, it's basically what it was two or three slides ago. Yeah, that's right. It's 20 past one now. So it's 20 past one. All right. So that's when lunch starts. But remember, you don't have to wait till lunch to eat some food. All right. Have a snack. Bring a snack in. Buy a snack. Break time? Never rock. Okay. So packing a school bag, that's new. Now, hopefully, your parents are helping you out. And if you're not parents, because I'm hoping you're watching this as well. If you're not, let your children start to practice packing a bag. All right. Let them start organising themselves. Maybe make up a, a set of a timetable like I have here. Say, right, I want you to pack your bag and take it seriously. Take it seriously. They are in charge. We're learning some independence. All right. So what are they going to pack? What are they going to need for a day? What are you going to need for a day where you've got those subjects? Have a think. So I've, I've given you some thinking time. I reckon there's eight things that you might need. But what I want you to do is quickly write those things down. Off you go. Go and get a pen. All right. Or if you if you really uh, I don't know tech tech savvy, then perhaps type them into your uh, into your phone. Go on, off you go. So eight items that you might need to take into school for for a day like that. Bear in mind you've got to carry those items around. Now, on that subject, you do have the uh, opportunity to uh, rent a locker. Um, and we'll give you more information about that and lots of students like that because as you can probably tell uh, you're going to be doing a lot more exercise and you're going to be carrying a lot more stuff than you do currently. You all done that? Hopefully you've got your list. Let's have a look at my list. Okay. Now, the one that I think you'll probably have certainly struggled with. So we've got a PE kit. I'm guessing most pick, yeah? I'm hoping, hoping that if you put money for lunch, or in fact we pay with our fingerprint, I know, weird, right? Um, we pay with our fingerprint, but we can call that money. If you put something about lunch or food, good stuff, okay? If you've put a drink, excellent. You've probably, I hope, put some sort of stationery. So, yeah, need some stationery. You've probably put books, and some of you might have listed books from different subjects. I'm just going to call those books, okay? Uh, you always, every single day, need a reading book. Every day. Every, I can't, I mean, I am stressing it enough, but I can't stress it enough. I'm, I'm stressing it. You need a reading book. Hopefully something you enjoy, all right? Uh, for, to that, for that day, you do need a calculator, because you've got maths, remember? Yeah? Good one. Uh, it is possible to use your phone as a calculator. Uh, if you ask the teacher for permission, okay, you can't just get your phone out because they're going to be thinking that you're texting or doing something you shouldn't be. So you have to ask the member of staff. I would still say bring a calculator. I'm a bit old school. And finally, the one that you probably struggle with or you didn't get would be your planner. So a planner is a little book, probably I don't know the size of kind of my hand like this. I was it was Star Wars day yesterday, hence my Star Wars plaster. See that? I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, um, it's about the size of your hand and on one inside cover you have your timetable for week A and on the other side you have your timetable for week B. And so that's really important so you know where you're going because you won't learn your timetable off by heart straight away. And we put those on stickers. Now that's something new as well, I just mentioned we have different uh, timetables for different weeks. 
Now you'll always be told what week it is, so you don't need to panic about that. We have signs around and we put that on our Twitter and things like that. But just be aware that we, you won't have exactly the same subject, period two, on a Tuesday, both weeks. Okay, you'll have something different or you may well have something different. So that's one reason you need your planner. All right, also inside your planner, if you are, we don't like to encourage people to use the toilet during lessons, but if you need to go to the toilet, you're absolutely desperate, your teacher will sign a page in your planner to give you permission. You must then take your planner with you so that if any other member of staff sees you, they can say, oh, okay, can, uh, why are you out of lessons, please? And then you can say, oh, it's okay, I've got this note. And that goes for any reason to be outside of lessons. So that is why it's your passport, okay, to get around school when you should be in class, okay? Wherever possible, we'd like you to stay in class. But you might need to go to medical because you're feeling unwell, or whatever reason, you must get your teacher to sign your planner, and then you, your planner stays with you and is shown to anyone else that sees you that asks why you're out of lessons, okay? So that's your plan. That's the main uses of your plan. There's lots of other bits in your planner which we'll talk much more about uh, when you arrive with us. So that's your list of eight items. So congratulations if you got uh, anywhere near eight of those. Well done. Now these are equipment, or this is equipment that you really need. Now I've highlighted the fact that you must have a green pen. Most people, obviously, as a matter of course, would have uh, a black pen or, or a blue pen or both. But green pen is perhaps a little bit different. Now I know, even, uh, you know, at primary schools, you will have a special pen that you will probably mark your own work with. And that's what our green pen is for. So our green pen is when you might make some changes to a piece of work that's been marked by a member of staff in red, and then you, in green, will acknowledge that. So you'll say, yep, I've read that, and then you will do something to improve your work. So it's absolutely vital that you have a green pen as well as your normal black or blue ink that we ask you to write in your books with, all right? Uh, other than that, I think most of those things are self-explanatory. Obviously, you won't need food ingredients or PE kit every day. Uh, you'll be told what your food ingredients are. You'll get a book, I think it's yellow, it usually is, and it will tell you in advance what food you, ingredients you need to bring in on whichever week. So when you have food and nutrition, which is a lesson where you learn to cook, uh, and you learn about what's good for your body and things like that, you will be told what ingredients you need, but do not bring those in every day and do not leave them in your locker because they will smell, all right? If you leave milk in your locker for a couple of weeks, yuck, quite frankly, yuck. So don't do that, just have a look. Equally, PE kit, don't leave it in your locker for weeks, it will smell, it will really, really smell. So make sure you know when you've got PE or when you've got a club that needs your PE kit and bring it in on those days, okay? And then take it home and why don't you have a wash? Why don't you give it a wash, right? Rather than give it to your parents, why don't you try and wash it? There's another aspect of uh, giving you some independence and responsibility. Then we've got some other bits and pieces. Obviously, planner, I've mentioned most of these. Ruler, quite a lot of people think they don't need a ruler. What do you need a ruler? You need to underline titles, dates, all sorts of things. A ruler measure things, obviously. So please have a ruler. And then we've got some optional things, but I actually think they would be really helpful. So if you can bring in coloured pencils, scissors and glue, we do provide them at school, all right? But it's so helpful to just be able to get them out of your pencil case. All right. Now, equally, I know that in some primary schools, you're, no long, you're not allowed pencil cases because they become a distraction on your table. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, and I'm a bit of a stationary geek, so I look at it as great. Uh, we don't have that option. We can't provide you with a set of all those uh, essential items in every classroom. So we expect you to have that contained within the pencil case. So we do expect you to have a pencil case so that you can carry that with you. I would actually advise you have a pencil case in your uh, bag at all times and then you have a separate pencil case or separate at least pen and pencil and things at home. Because what we often have is that people say, oh, well, I've left it at home so I was doing my homework and I've left my pen and pencil at home or whatever it happens. So I've left my pencil case at home. That's a nightmare. So but I would suggest, if you can, invest in having a set of stationery in your bag and a set of stationery at home. All right. It's going to save a lot of upset and a lot of confusion. Um, and your teacher's not going to get fed up of having to give you out a pen or a pencil or a ruler all the time. All right, so that's your equipment that you need. Right, now we do have rules because any society has rules because we're trying to maintain safety. Ultimately, rules are pretty much there for safety. They're also there to make sure that everyone is achieving their best. 
Uh, it's very selfish if you are not obeying the rules, because if you're not obeying the rules, there's no way that everybody can achieve. Not just you, but everybody. And we're interested in everybody's education and everybody's well-being. So we want to make sure that you follow some of these things. Now we'll start with the positives. So we can see we can spell pace out here. So we've got personal progress, positive attitude, productive contribution, and persistent effort. And a lot of teachers have got these in their classrooms. So you'll be able to sort of cross-reference this. And if you do that, in the register, instead of a dash, which you normally get, all right, you'll get a number and you'll get a five. And a five leads to rewards. The more fives you get, fives mean prizes. I tried to rhyme that last year when I did this. It, it still doesn't rhyme. Um, yeah, I got nothing. So anyway, fives means prize. So that was a bit. That was a bit better. Uh, Mrs. Pitock is shaking her head at me and looking embarrassed for me. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Pitock. Uh, so if we want you to do this. It isn't asking too much. All right. It's what we expect. It's what we want, and it's what's going to help you to achieve the best that you possibly can. What we don't want is you doing any of these things. Uh, don't ask me why it's in bright pink, I guess because it stands out. So we don't want you stopping other people learning, we don't want a low effort, we don't want poor attitude and we don't want disruptive behaviour. Now that's pretty common sense. If you do those things in lessons, repeatedly usually, but even if just once, doesn't matter, the teacher decides, you will be given a 1 on the register. And a 1 is not a good mark to get. Uh, I used to live in a house which, which was uh, number one, and I had to move because I have that much upset from hearing the number one. It causes me great pain. Please don't get any ones, okay? We have a history in year seven of getting the most fives and the fewest ones. Let's keep that going, okay? Let's be the best we can be. That is what I want, that is what everybody at our school wants, is you are the best version of yourself possible. And you can't be doing that if you're doing these things. And you can't help other people be the best they can be if you're doing these things. Do not be selfish. Do not steal their time. Allow everybody to be their best. So that's what that means. Now, a lot of people then think, oh well, it must be a, a scale of one to five. So two's kind of a bit better than one, and three's a bit better than that, and four's kind of good, and five's amazing. It doesn't work like that. It is not a scale from one to five. The other numbers mean slightly different things, and you can see them there. So if you don't complete homework for a lesson, you'll get a two, and you'll get a sanction probably for that. If you don't have the right equipment, which we've already mentioned, you'll get a three and you may get a sanction for that. Certainly if you repeat that, you'll get a sanction. Uh, and if you use your phone without having permission from the member of staff in the room, you will get a four, and therefore you will also receive a sanction for that. So the codes all mean different things, okay? It's very important that you understand the fives and the ones the most, but there are other codes for things that we expect, or we expect that you do or don't do. So those are those numbers that I've spoken about, so they are the most important thing. It might be that in a lesson you just kind of, there, meh, kind of average, kind of doing the right thing most of the time, but just sort of coasting a bit. You'll probably get a dash, just to say you were there, all right? So if you don't go above and beyond, okay, or over and above, then you won't get a five, all right? So you can't just be like a sack of potatoes sitting in your, in your chair and, Okay, you need to be participating, you need to be making that extra effort to get a five. All right, but, but you don't necessarily get a one for, for not doing your absolute best. We just expect that. You may see these up in a classroom, you may not. All right, these are visual prompts of whether you can use your phone or tablet uh, uh, in a lesson or not. We use them for internet access. Yes, we can use them for calculators. We can use them for all sorts of reasons. They are very, very valuable. In geography, for example, we do some VR work. So we do some virtual reality where you put your phone in a little box and we send you to a website and you can explore mountains and you can explore uh, polar environments and you can explore deserts and you can explore rainforests. We can't do that if everyone doesn't have a phone, all right? Now, I know that people misuse phones and that, that phones and social media have this very, very negative impact and I'm more conscious than anybody else about that. So trust me, I do not want students in my year groups having uh, WhatsApp necessarily or Instagram or, or Facebook because there's age restrictions on all of those things. Now, whatever you do at primary school is whatever your primary school lets you do. 
when you're at my school, at our school at Hinchinbrook, I don't expect that. If nobody has it, there's no peer pressure to get it. So if we all buy into that, and I'm speaking to parents as well as you uh, year sixes, if we all expect, if we all say we're not going to have any of those social media, then there's no pressure to get it. The reason people want it is because parents don't want their children to miss out. And I think that's quite sad. Now, I understand there are benefits to it, particularly at the times we find ourselves in. All right? Uh, that can stay at home. If you, if you choose to use those social media and things, then, then I guess that's at home. But this is my plea to you, all right, that you are not using those at school. And ideally, you're not actually using them at all um, because you are not old enough. Um, according to their own guidance to use them responsibly. But in terms of using the internet and things like that, school, we use it a lot. Now these are some of the rewards that you can gain. So this one you won't gain in the first year because you have to have completed a year before you get one. But these are for attendance, so you get a nice pin, uh, depending on your year group colour. By the way, just so you know, your tie will have stripes on it, and you are the gold. The gold stripes, wow. So you are the gold, the gold stripes, um, and so you would, uh, if you get over 97% attendance in your year seven year, you will get a gold pin, I think that's how it works. If not, I might be completely wrong, and you might still get a white one, I don't know. Now, here we've got uh, the fives, so I talked about fives a little bit earlier, so you will get this badge when you've gained 100 fives. So to gain 100 fives, you have six opportunities in a day to get a five. You have a morning registration, and you have five lessons. You can get a five in any of those. So that's six. So what's the most you can get in a week? That's right, five multiplied by six is 30. Congratulations, those of you who are good at your five times table, which I'm sure is all of you. So you could get 30 in a week, which means you could get 100 in just over three weeks. I would be so amazed, I would be so impressed, okay? But that is the aim, that is the aim. As far as I'm aware, that's not happened. So let's try and make it happen in your year group, 2020, 2021, okay? That is our next year, that is you are in year seven in 2020, 2021, and we wanna make sure that you do your absolute best. So try and get that. If you, if you get to 500 fives, which is phenomenal, uh, before the lockdown, I think we had someone on 464. So they would, there was no doubt they were gonna reach 500. And I feel a bit sorry, I hope we do come back so that that person has an opportunity to just get those 36 extra ones uh, to get their, their, their gold ribbon, all right? You can't buy these, well you can, they cost about a penny, but in terms of what they mean, right, they are priceless. They are priceless, they are so important, okay, because you can only wear those on your, on your blazer uh, lapel if you've earned them. So the people that are walking around with the badge at the start, the first people to get the badges are like, whoa, they've got a badge. It's like amazing, it's a good status symbol. And then the first people to wear gold, I mean, that's just legend status right there. So we need to get you up to 500. It is possible, as I say, it's definitely possible. We've got, uh, you get this certificate, it's a nice certificate along with the pin when you get that. You get badges for various things. These are all to do with whether you've represented your house at sports and stuff like that. You get achievement pins. There's a whole range of things. We do Star of the Week, where you can nominate each other for, for things like citizenship. So if you've seen somebody helping somebody out and things like that, um, then you can help them. You know, you can reward them. So we're not going. We haven't got eyes everywhere as, as teachers. We wish we did. Okay. I mean, I do have a pair of eyes in the back of my head just in case. But I, you know, I don't have multiple eyes. So we need you to be looking around for things for people that are doing the right thing. Okay, um, and so you can then reward that. And at the back of my office door, uh, I've got an office in lower school, at the back of my door, I've got a little envelope, you just need to scribble on a bit of paper, or try and make it neat, decorate it maybe, uh, and brighten my day by putting somebody's name in there and saying why they deserve Star of the Week. Not just for being a great friend, we expect everybody to be a great friend, all right? But something that they've done that is beyond what you would expect. We've got Golden Atlas. You become Twitter famous if you, uh, your form, get the most fives in a week in lower school. So out of the 20 forms in lower school, because year seven and eight are lower school forms, there are 20, so 10 in each uh, year group, 
If you get the most in your form, you get your photograph taken and it gets put on Twitter and then a copy of the photo gets put onto various boards around the school. We're now running out of boards because we've got that many uh, forms that we've celebrated for achieving these things. Equally, we also have these things called house points. House points are a real currency. So most of you will have watched Harry Potter, I'm sure, uh, and you'll note that in there they have a house point competition. We have the same. And at the end of a, a, a term, the people with the most house, the house with the most house points, rather, will have their flag flown uh, on above the house. It's a real proud moment. Everybody around sort of Brampton and Huntingdon really can see it, or certainly as you drive in to Huntingdon, you can see the flag of the house that has been most successful with their house points in that term. So that's great. But in terms of a personal reward for that person, you can see we've got a range of different rewards that go all the way up to a football uh, and memory sticks. In fact, we've had people get over 200. Um, and so we've had to make the pages, there's more pages in your planner because your planner is also used to collect little stamps or the initials of teachers to say whether you've been awarded a house point. Okay, now house points are often given for out of lesson activities. So if you were seen, I don't know, picking up litter, if you were helping somebody without having been asked, if you were just being a good citizen around school, a bit like you get for Star of the Week. So the sorts of things that I reward for Star of the Week, you might also get a house point if a teacher sees you doing those things. All right, so basically it could be an amazing piece of homework as well. So it's things that you perhaps do where it's not in a lesson where you might get a five, although you can get house points in a lesson because you could just help somebody. You could just do something that is absolutely phenomenal uh, and the teacher wants you to give you more than just a five. They want to give you house points. But often, house points are given for things that are just done around the school, uh, things that are done to help people, things that are done that are exceptional. Okay, Again, representing your house in inter-house competitions would probably earn you house points as well. So that's what house points are gained for, and these are some of the prizes that you can get. Again, priceless in some ways, because you can't just go out and buy a Montague water bottle. Okay, You, you have to earn it. So these are things that, although... They may not be super expensive in what they are, they are expensive in what they mean and what they represent. And one of those is a Q-Jump Pass. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, we are a big school. Uh, we have nearly 2,000 students. Uh, we have 1,500 of those students who eat at the dining hall or have the opportunity to go and get food at the dining hall. So you can imagine that sometimes queues are quite long. So if you get a Q-Jump Pass, that means you get to go to the front. It's not pushing in, you've earned it. It's a reward. Again, if you attend a club at lunch times, you can also get a Q-Jump Pass by asking the club leader. So we don't expect you, if you've joined a club that is at lunchtime, and we do have quite a few, then we don't expect you to have to lose all your club time by standing in a line for lunch. So you, again, you can ask one of those. But a Q-Jump Pass is a really valuable, um, a valuable prize. This is our school uniform. So I'm sure many of you live near to people who have got our school uniform and you perhaps even have siblings in your own household who wear our school uniform. Hopefully they wear it with pride. I think it is a very, very smart uniform. We were one of the first in the area to kind of revert back to blazers. When I was here as a student, we had these uh, almost fluorescent green blazers. Uh, they were definitely something. We, we didn't necessarily like them, but we knew that meant we were part of something. We knew that meant we were part of a community. And so we kind of suffered the green together, if you like. Um, I've still got mine. Um, it, it's, it's in my geography area, which is kind of weird. But um, again, it's, it's one of those things. If you, if you dress smartly, we'll probably think you're going to work better. OK, so that's why we expect a uniform. And also uniform means all at the same. Right. So we don't want people wearing their flashy uh, extra, you know, their clothes they've spent hundreds of pounds on because not everyone can afford that. And, and it can lead to bullying and it can lead to problems. So we often get asked, well, how does, how does uh, uniform affect my learning? Well, I, I, I'm wearing a suit. We are currently in a lockdown situation. Why am I wearing a suit? Because I feel professional when I wear my suit. It's me at work. This is me working. OK, so it's exactly the same for you. All right. So I expect you to be dressed as smartly as possible. And not only in September when you're really proud and everything's new, but equally when you're here in July, okay, and you've completed the whole year. And okay, we might let you take your blazers off if it's super hot, all right? But we still expect you to have your shirt tucked in. We still expect you to, to, to be smart, okay, in all senses. You do your best if you look your best. 
and that's what we want. So here you've got the way that we tell your house apart. So we've got the different shades, different colours. Uh, we've already been through that, so Cromwell, Montague, I don't know why we've got Beasy there, but Beasy, uh, Peeps, and then Wilton, all right? And as I've already mentioned, we can tell your tie, uh, we can tell your year group. So you will have gold stripes, and that means when we look at a student, we can tell their year group, and we instantly, by looking at their tie, and we can instantly tell what house they're in by looking at their badge. So we've then narrowed our 1,500 students who wear school uniform at Hinchinbrook to 60. Just like that. So that is another bonus for both you and us because we can identify who you are and we can we, we kind of know that you're year seven. We know that you're new, therefore. We know that we need to help you because you've got your gold stripe. Equally, we know what house you're in, so we've narrowed it down. All okay? right, so we, we can narrow it down to a group of 60 as opposed to 1500. It makes our school much smaller, much more of a unit. All right, so it gives you that identification, I guess. So that's the other reason for our different colours of ties and our different colours of badges. All right, but the most important thing about the school uniform is you wear it with pride. And, and I want you to be proud of being at Hinchin Road. All right, it's, I'm super proud to teach here. I'm, I'm beyond proud of our school. I think we're an amazing school for all sorts of reasons. Uh, and I want you to feel that way. So we've got some rules. So we've, in lower school, we make it easy. So we've got no jewellery, you are allowed a watch, okay, but no jewellery, and you are allowed a pair of stud earrings, okay, so although it says no jewellery, it means like bracelets and, and lots of rings all over your fingers and, uh, and things like that, you can't have that, you can't have uh, makeup or nail varnish or false or gel nails, again, it's a blanket thing, nobody can have it, there's no peer pressure, I mean yes you might look at some year nines or tens and say well they've got, yeah they've earned that, they're older than you. That's how it works. That's kind of life, to be honest with you. So you are in year seven and you do not have those things. Nobody does. So you are all the same, okay? Hair should look natural. So if you dye it bright purple, that's not natural. That is not a natural color. If you have stripes in it, that's not natural. If you have kind of, there's like a layer here where it's a different color, I think there's a native a dip dye, I don't know what it's called, but anyway. You can't have that, that's not natural. That's not something that you just like wake up one day and it's gonna look like that, okay? So we want it to look natural. It shouldn't look dyed and it shouldn't look shaved. All right, if you shave it underneath and we can't see it, well, okay. All right, if, you, if boys really want it really quite short, okay, but not shaved, not like, you know, grade three or four or two or three or something, we're like, all like, no, no, we don't want that, all right? We're not, we're not into that. No facial piercings, so no piercings on your nose and your lip or wherever else. One piercing in each ear, max, okay? You can have another hole in your ear, it's up to you, it's up to your parents, but you can't put anything in it. The last, the other thing I want to mention about the piercings, please, 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 if you are getting your ears pierced, okay, because it's like a treat for going into secondary school, get it done at the start of the summer holidays. Do not get it done a week or two before, because you will be told by the person who does it, oh, you can't take them out, you can't take them out. And then your PE teacher will say, take your earrings out, please. And you'll say, oh, no, 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 I can't. Mum says I can't, Dad says I can't. Well, you're gonna have to, because we will not allow you to do PE, and you will be punished for it, unfortunately, because I am now giving you a warning. So please, if you are going to get your ears pierced as a treat before coming back in, in September, get them pierced at the start of holiday because it, normally it's about a month to six weeks. Okay, you have to leave the earrings in. So don't wait. If you're going to do it, do it then. Equally, if you're going to dye your hair because you want to have fun over the summer and you just want it at the start, because by the time you get back in September, if it's still dyed and it's still the wrong colour, you are going to be in trouble. You are going to be asked to sort it out. Okay, so that is me giving you a, a friendly bit of advice um, for getting those piercings done and things like that. Because I don't want you to get in trouble with the first thing that your PE teacher says to you, take those earrings out, and the first time you have an interaction with that teacher, it's going to become a negative one. I don't want that. Of course I don't. And you don't want that either. All right? Um, we want you to look smart. If you look smart, then you'll work smart. Crying. Um, HBK.com. So, how does this all kind of relate and how does this all kind of build into something that we stand for as a school? We came up with this over the last couple of years. Um, and by we, I mean sort of the heads of year and, uh, and people like myself. And 
We wanted the idea that Hinchinbrook isn't just a school, it's more than that, it's a community, it's an area, it's something that is uh, beyond just our four walls, um, it's almost like an atmosphere, it's kind of a weird thing to put your finger on. What we've done though is we've tried. So we've tried to put our finger on what does being an HBK community member mean? We feel it means these three things. So we want people to feel pr pride, we want them to be proud of attending here, we want them to be proud to be associated, we want the parents of students who come here to go, yeah my child goes to Inchinbrook, brilliant. Because I know, I know there are a number of parents who do feel that way. And I know there are loads and loads of students who come here who feel that way. And then some of those students, they may not even come across as being that proud, but they are sitting at home right now, because we are all generally sitting at home right now, and they are missing school. And they are thinking, I can't wait to be back at school. They are proud of our school, okay? And we want you to be proud of our school. We want you to be proud of being part of the Hinchinbrook community. That's important to us, okay? I know I am, all right? But I need everybody who comes and joins us to be as well, okay? We've then got empathetic. We feel that being empathetic, it's a difficult word. It's a word that I stress a lot in my PSHCE lessons. Empathy, this idea of living in someone else's shoes, understanding from someone else's perspective, okay? Not feeling sorry for someone, but actually understanding it, understanding what someone is going through. Because if you do that, well, first of all, in a grand scale, we probably wouldn't have war around the planet, okay? We would probably all be helping each other, which a lot of us are at the moment with the uh, coronavirus situation. And you're seeing a lot of empathy. You're seeing people living each other's ideas, not just feeling sorry for people, but actually doing something to, to try and repair any problems for people, being kind. I say. So being empathetic is so, so important, all right? And it's not something that comes naturally to everybody, and it is something that we're gonna try and, uh, I guess, hopefully instill in, in, in you if you don't already have it. Many of you will, and you may not even realize it. But it's living, someone, it's understanding from someone else's perspective. Very important. And responsible. We want you to be responsible. Obviously a lot of that at the start is about being responsible for yourself. And you really are only in charge of yourself. But in time, we want you to take on leadership positions. We want you to start being responsible for other people. But at the start, being responsible for packing your bag. Being responsible perhaps for making your lunch. Being responsible for getting the bus on time. Being responsible for... Uh, your own behaviour, because you own your own behaviour, you are responsible for your own behaviour. No one makes people laugh. I, I hear that a lot. Oh, they made me laugh. No. No. Okay? You need to be responsible for your own behaviour. That is, that is year seven aim, goal, right? As a minimum, is you are responsible for you. Then we need to get onto this idea of being responsible for other people and starting to take on those leadership business. But there's some of you in year six who I know are school captains and things like that, and house captains, Come here and do the same thing, like volunteer for stuff. We've got loads of leadership opportunities. You can be responsible from day one at our school and you can actually be a role model for some of the older year groups. I say that a lot because the year sevens, the year sevens often show other year groups how to behave and how to do the right thing and they are excellent. So I expect that from you guys when you turn up here as well. So being responsible, as I say, minimum for yourself, but let's go that step further. Let's try and be responsible for other things, okay? There will be leadership positions in every form linked to these three characteristics, okay? So in every single form, there will be a leader who is the, the leader of the proud thing, the leader of the empathetic group, and the leader of responsibility within your form, okay? So you will have an opportunity from day one to show some of these characteristics. Now I just want to briefly talk about the food court, I know I've been talking a lot and you can imagine if you're actually here I'd be asking you questions as well. So this is our food court, uh, our food court is divided into four sections. Uh, this, this lady here is a legend, her name is Sheila and she has been uh, a cleaner and a supervisor here for I think nearly 40 years, oh definitely 30, uh, 35 years. So uh, she's been here a long long time, she does move, she doesn't just sit there and, and actually she's a lovely lady. Um, so she helps out with a lot of things around the school. Um, but these are our four zones, if you like. So we've got uh, Global Adventure, I think that is, uh, and then we've got Street Food, and then we've got Speed Italian, and then we've got Grab and Go. And all of those different areas of the food court sell slightly different things. Uh, and so if you fancy something a little bit uh, different, 
then you might try this global adventure. So you might try something that might be a curry, uh, it might be something from a different location. Street food is often something you can uh, sort of eat with your hands. Uh, so it might be that uh, it's like chicken wings or something like that. Uh, speedy Italian is your pizza and your pasta. Uh, and then grab and go is usually something cold that you can literally grab and go. Uh, so, that's for people who just want to get something and then just go, so they want something quick. Alright, okay, now, finding your way around. So we've got those four different sections, as you can see. We've got an arrow, which is kind of a weird arrow at the moment, because at the moment you won't really understand that, but the main entrance is here. So the main entrance to get food from either of these three, any of these three, is here, and you will line up here. Now we have a serving for year seven and eight, who go in first one week, and then we have a serving for years 9, 10 and 11 who go in first the, the next week. When you're not going in, when you're not in the line to go directly in because you are in the second week, you're going second, you line up in the line up area. Okay? If you are uh, due to go in first on that week, you will line up just here. Okay? So, arrows. So that's where you go in. There will be a member of staff here, there will be a member of staff here. Uh, just to make sure we don't let too many people in at once. So you'll be queuing up outside to so bring a brolly if it's raining uh, and wear a coat if it's a bit cold. Uh, and then you will hover here and you will decide, do I want to have something from here, here or here? Okay, you do not enter this door if you want the grab and go. We'll come to the grab and go. So you enter here, you line up here. And whilst you're lined up here, you decide. Okay, so by the time you get to the front, then someone at the front is going to say, right, who wants street food? And they'll just send you straight there. Or if you want Global Adventure, they'll stay, send you there. If you want Speedy Italian, they'll send you there. You do not queue along the whole line here to get to Speedy Italian. You will join the queue, you'll be sent directly from here to join here. So it's a little bit quicker, all right? Otherwise, you'd be there forever. So as you can see, there's different little entrances to those three different areas. And you'll wander along there, doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, and you'll, you'll look at the lovely food, and you'll go, hmm, that is lovely food. And then you will pick something, and you'll say, I'd like that, please. And you'll make sure you say please, because that's polite. Uh, and then you'll, they'll give it to you, and you'll say, oh, thank you very much. That's lovely. And then you'll go to the end, just about here, and there'll be a till. And rather than go, oh, where's all my money? Hey, you found your finger, because it's at the end of your hand, and you'll go, beep, and you'll press it onto a, uh, a little pad, because we'll have taken your fingerprints, uh, not because we think you're criminals or anything like that, but because you can load money onto those fingerprints. And you go, beep and it will take the money off the cat automatically and then you go and eat, eat your food and enjoy your food. You may sit here, you may decide to go outside, that either, any of those things are fine. Alternatively, you might want to get in as quickly as you can, although it's not always quicker, I have to say, not always quicker. But you will go into an entrance in the back of the food court and then you will line up along a corridor. Again, there'll be a member of staff here, there'll be a member of staff here, making sure that everyone's queuing up sensibly and then you'll be let in. Okay, and that way you can just go straight to here, grab whatever food you want, uh, say it's cold sandwiches, things like that, drinks, and, uh, and yeah, stuff like that. And then you'll have your little fingerprint thing at the end there, and again, you can just go out from there. You're quite welcome to sit in here, all right, but most people at this time of year anyway, and certainly uh, in September when you arrive, if it's sunny, will want to leave and go out. There are rules for the food court, because there are rules to keep everyone safe and to make sure that everyone work, everything works properly. You can take your bags in, but you must place them under your seat, so we don't want them in the corridors because you'll fall, people fall over their food. Uh, if you're buying food and using cutlery or crockery, you must eat this inside the food court. I don't think that happens very often now, but you've got to make sure you don't go outside if that is the case. Please make sure that you clear up your litter. That is super important. At the moment, it's a big drive. There should always be, really. Uh, I'm, I'm so pleased with how pretty the site looks at the moment, and unfortunately, it's because there are no children here. Uh, and we need to make sure that it stays like this when there are children back in school. So please put your litter. It's not, any, it's not a big stress. It's not difficult. Please do it. Uh, and any recycling, obviously pick the right bins for the right thing. Um, so basically, fairly basic rules, okay? Um, right, these are dates. This is uh, kind of the last slide, if you like. Now, I have mentioned, um, I have mentioned that we, at the moment, Taste of Days are a little bit up in the air. They were due to take place on Tuesday the 30th of June, Wednesday the 1st of July, and Thursday the 2nd of July, with the evening event for parents on that uh, Thursday the 2nd. Um, obviously, I'm, I hope you understand that we cannot, at the moment, commit to fulfilling that. Uh, there are lots and lots of different ideas that I have. Uh, I'm going to obviously talk to our senior management at school, um, and we'll definitely get back to you. So please do not panic and think, oh, well, they're not thinking about it. Trust me, 
I haven't stopped thinking about it. This, this is my baby, if you like. This is what I live for, this is what I do. Uh, and I always think about how we're going to make sure the transition works. And this year is no different. It's just a little bit crazy. So there will be some sort of taste today at some point. Uh, it might be this side of the summer holidays, it might be the end of the summer holidays before we go back in September. There will be a time where you can get familiarised with things and you will do these things. Do not worry about the tests. The tests are used by us to set you some targets along with your SAT scores, but obviously you haven't done SATs, so everything's a little bit weird at the moment. So that almost makes these, um, these I mean, I don't know. We're, we're definitely going to need to do those, is what I'm saying. So whether we do those this side of the summer or at the end of the summer, we're still up in the air about that. So I'm sorry I can't give you firm dates or details about that, but those are some of the things that we hope you'll experience during that time. Um, we've also got some work for you to try and get on with. I know that your primary schools have hopefully already uh, communicated with you about this Get Ahead project, which is kind of the perfect, uh, I guess, introduction to our curriculum, to some of our lessons. So we've got a lot of activities in there that hopefully, as I say, some of you have started already uh, and that you can then complete. Uh, the idea isn't that we necessarily go through and mark every page or, the, or anything like that. It might be that you bring in um, maybe three of your favourite things that you've done in your Get Ahead project that you want to show those particular subject teachers. All right, so it's not essential that you complete it all. And I'm not going to, uh, we're not going to mark it forensically and make sure that everything is, you know, that it's not about that. It's about giving you a sense of what sort of work you will be given in year seven and also a bit of a heads up about some of the topics. So if you choose to, over the summer holidays, you can actually read up on some of those things. So if you know, for example, that in geography, you're going to be learning about Japan, maybe you'll do some research about Japan, maybe you'll just do some, some reading about Japan. So that's really the purpose of the Get Ahead project. All right, the other two things, because we're not just interested in you as a, a sort of an empty uh, vessel to fill with information about subjects, we actually care about you as a person and we want to know kind of what makes you tick and who you are. We're also asking you to complete this All About Me capsule. The idea about this is that it's like a shoebox or that sort of size that contains um, basically hobbies that you're interested in. Maybe it's got something about your family. Maybe it's got some achievements or awards that you've gained. Maybe it's got a piece of art that you're really proud of. But something or some things rather that you would say, this is me in a box. So it represents you in a box. It might be photographs, etc. So it might be, and I think I've, you know, I, I'm not sure how easy this would be to do, but to video yourself doing an activity that you're passionate about or interested in, uh, and then that can bring, be brought in as part of it on a memory stick, and then you can show that um, to your form. So the idea is that your other form mates will get to know you by looking at this box and, and looking at some stuff. Don't bring anything too valuable in or that you don't want to be, you know, obviously you don't want any of it to be damaged, but don't bring anything silly in that you think is really expensive. But or a sentimental value, but please have a think about what you would put in your All About Me box and try and put that together and bring that in on your first day in September. The other thing that we'd like you to bring in in September, and hopefully you'll get access to your school, because hopefully you'll get a chance to return to school soon, is that your, uh, I want you to collect your best piece of work that you are most proud of in a variety of subjects. So your best English piece of work, your best uh, geography, if you do some geography, your best history, your best uh, in you know maths piece of work whatever it happens to be and put the name of the subject although hopefully it will be fairly obvious uh, onto the top of that page put it into a folder and bring that in and then in your first lesson of that let of that subject you will hand that piece of work to your teacher so that it gives your teacher an idea of what they're expecting of you because uh, we don't want you to sit back when you join year seven and go oh, I'll just twiddle my thumbs this is easy kind of thing we want to be stretching you from day one Okay, so you want to be looking at what is your best, how can we make that even better? Now part of the transition is about you as a person, gaining responsibility and all those sorts of things. So that's part of it and so it's not all about curriculum, but equally we don't want the curriculum to suffer. We don't want you to go backwards academically, but we want to move you forwards. And so that is kind of the, the reason for us looking at some of the work that you've completed in year six that is your best. Now at this stage, normally, I would say, are there any questions? If you do have questions, um, write them down. At this stage, I am, because we don't know whether I actually will get to get, get into a visit or hopefully there will be some form of taste today, I don't really want you or need you to bombard questions to the lower school email address, although you're quite welcome to do so. Um, also, go to our website. if you might, You might be able to find some information there. Uh, we are going to upload this uh, 
uh, PowerPoint onto our website as well. So as well as having this video to look at as I talk you through it, you can also have the document itself. It won't have me interrupting you, so it actually might be more beneficial. Um, but uh, if there are any questions following those things, then write them down. So I'm not saying, you know, don't ask them or forget them. Write them down. And then when we do meet again, because we will, then I want you to bring those questions in and so we can then answer them. Either your tutor answer them, I'll answer them, Mr. Pitt will answer them, somebody will have an answer for you. Okay? If they are things that absolutely can't wait, then obviously, yes, please email um, the lower school. It's lower school at hinchbk.cams.sch.uk. So that's lower school, all one word, at hinchbk.cams.sch.uk. Uh, other than that, I hope you're staying safe. Uh, and I really, really look forward to meeting you all uh, as soon as we possibly can. Thank you. Bye-bye.